All right, welcome back. In this lecture, we will cover the basic Unreal Engine viewport, all the controls, and all the UI to make you more familiar with the editor. Uh, that way, you know how to move and navigate through the Unreal Engine editor, as well as know what all the different windows do. And so let's go ahead and get started. So the very first time you open up the Unreal Engine editor, the main window that you're going to see here in the center is called the viewport. The viewport is where you can see your 3D world and to move around the viewport all you have to do is with the right mouse button hold the right mouse button down and what you can do is when you move the mouse around you can look around by just holding down the right mouse button. Then with the WASD keyboard controls you can move forward, back, left and right and then when you move the mouse around you can look down and that will move you down if you look up that will move you up so very simple controls just the right mouse button and the WASD on your keyboard and the other control that you have in here is you can also click to select various things with left click okay now in our viewport we have various different buttons and controls so we're gonna first focus on just the viewport then we'll move on to these other windows over here. So over on the viewports here, we have these uh, this three lines option menu. And if you click on any of these menus, you're gonna see that it pops down, you know, a drop down menu. Okay, so viewport options, uh, some of these different settings you might use, but basically I'll go over a couple of them. I have things like show FPS. So if you wanna show your frame rate, you have also other things like if you want to change your field of view. Uh, down here we have high resolution screenshot. So if you want to take a screenshot of your viewport. And those are just some of the basic settings. Over here on perspective, uh, this allows you to change your current view. So I change this to top. You see we get this sort of top down camera of our level. I can change this to bottom, left, right, and so on. Or you can go back to perspective. The next is the different view modes. So we have a lit scene. So this has uh, basically our normal scene with our lighting. We have the unlit. So this is actually really useful for if you you know don't have the best hardware or say you're working with a scene that has a ton of different high quality meshes and really all you want to do is lay them out organize them you need that frame rate boost using the unlit mode without all the lighting uh, will give you that uh, boost in frame rate next up we have the wireframe uh, this is if you want to see the geometry of all the different meshes or objects in your scene and we have the detail lighting I haven't really used this but basically this is a mode where everything is all the same color and basically you're just trying to look at uh, the lighting composition of your scene lighting only same sort of thing there's just a ton of other things another useful one is player collision so a lot of times you want to visualize the collision in your scene uh, because sometimes your character will stop moving all of a sudden or maybe you'll run into something that's invisible and you want to check the collisions you can do that by switching into the view mode okay there's a couple other uh, view modes down here but that's all we're going to focus on for now I'm just going to change this back to lit the next up we have show so this will show various things you know if we want to show collision uh, there's this little grid if you zoom in here at the zero position on the z-axis you're going to see this grid right here and sometimes this can be sometimes annoying if you want to unshow that you can just uncheck it right here uh, there's a couple other options that you can mess around with but like i said i'm just going to leave that at the defaults the next settings that we have over here are our different select modes so if you notice by now if you select any object in our scene you're going to see that we have 
not only this little movement gizmo, but we also have sort of this yellow highlight over our object. So this movement gizmo or consists of you know, three different arrows. So for example, we have a blue arrow, a red arrow, and a green arrow. And all the color means is it correlates with an axis. So if you look in the bottom left of your viewport, you're gonna see the 3D axes that will show you which arrow is which. So the blue corresponds with the Z, which is up and down. So if you select on the arrow, you can move the cube up and down by just left clicking and dragging by only selecting the blue arrow to move it up and down. So next up we have the X axis or the red arrow. So if you select that, you can move it back and forth on the X. Then the Y is the green arrow. So if you select only the green arrow, you can move it back on the Y axis. So those are the different axes. So if at any point you need to figure out which way is which, uh, because in some 3D programs it's you know different depending on which 3D program you're using. Those are the move controls. So that allows us to move you know various objects in our scene. And you can also grab an object by the center to move it around like so or you can grab it by two different axes to move it on both the X and the Y. Now over back to our viewport, we have the select objects. Basically, we can select different objects and then we have the translate objects, which is what we just went over. So there's a hotkey for this is if you press W on your keyboard you'll get that little gizmo pop-up. The next thing that we have here is the rotation tool. So if you click on this button or if you press E on your keyboard, you'll get the rotation gizmo. So the rotation gizmo has you know, our three axes, the blue or the Z right here. So we can rotate this around like so. We have our X axes, we can rotate it any number of degrees so you can see we have 10 degrees 20 40 90 and we could do a full 360 if we wanted to okay and same with the x so that's our rotation and then if we head over to this next button right here or if we press r on our keyboard we get the scale gizmo so the scale gizmo allows us to scale an object so if we only select the red arrow we could scale this cube on the X axis or we could only select the green arrow and scale it only on the Y axis or we can only grab it by the blue arrow and scale it on the Z another thing you could do is you could grab two different axes and scale it like so on the X or Y or you can grab all three and scale it uniformly all the way up to whatever size that you want. And again, to switch through all those controls, you just press W to get your translation gizmo, E to get your rotation gizmo, and R to get your scaling gizmo. Now, if at any point uh, you say you mess up or you rotate it and scale it in some weird way, you can undo all your changes by doing Control Z to undo. Now the next button here in our viewport is basically a button that will cycle through the world and local uh, coordinates. So what that means is if we take this cube and rotate it like this and then if we cycle to the move tool by pressing W so if we press W you can see that the Z or the translation gizmo the Z arrow is pointing directly up and we can move this cube around like this but if we switch this world over to local so you can see the difference between the world global and local is that little sphere so if you switch that to local you'll see what happens to the gizmo 
the gizmo switches its orientation to the local orientation of the cube. And since we rotated the cube however many degrees, uh, you can see that when we move the cube in any direction, it will move according to this gizmo orientation. So if we switch that back to the global, you can see that the global orientation of the gizmo is sort of aligned with a invisible grid. So that's the difference between the global and local uh, coordinate spaces. So we can control Z to undo all of our changes. Next up we have uh, this surface snapping. I don't necessarily use this at all so I'm going to gloss over that. But these next few buttons you will be using quite often. Basically if you haven't noticed already when you move your cube around or when you rotate your cube you can see that it's snapping you can only rotate it by 10 degrees okay so we don't really have a precise rotation or precise movement we can only move it according to these little snaps so that's basically called grid snapping and the grid snapping can be enabled or disabled or changed by clicking on these buttons up here so for moving we can disable the grid snapping by just clicking on the grid snapping icon right here blue highlighted means it's on gray means that the grid snapping has been disabled so you'll notice now when I move the cube it's super smooth so the snapping there's no snapping I can move this very precise I can get this however I want but if I re-enable the grid snapping we'll get that snapping with the cube now I can also change the snapping scale or the snapping value so if you click on this drop down you can change it to say a hundred and then you can see we move the cube every hundred units change that to a thousand you can see how far it snaps so this is super useful if you're designing a level and you need some sort of uniform uh, snapping for objects that you want to be placed in the same position. Of course we have a rotation snapping so without the snapping you can see that we have a very smooth rotation and of course you can re-enable it if you want to re-enable the grid snapping and you can change the uh, degrees at which you rotate the object at. Next up we have scaling snapping so if you click R to get your scaling gizmo you can see that we have a smooth scale when we turn the grid snapping off but if we turn it on you can see that we have sort of this incremental snapping when we scale it up so that is the grid snapping tools next up we have this camera speed so if you haven't already noticed when you move around your viewport you move at a set uh, speed and this can be changed by very simply just going to your camera speed here and either in increasing the value so you s zoom around really fast this is really useful if you have a super big map and you need to get across the map you can also decrease this to a much lower value like say one if you need to zoom up real close and get a more precise camera angle or location so you can just play around with the camera speed whenever you're moving around in the viewport uh, last but not least we have this little button cube grid button so if you click on that basically what that does is it gives you a quad view of your viewport so it gives you a four editor view of your current viewport so you have things like the uh, back view the right perspective and the top view and of course you could change all these views to you know a different angle if you wanted to and you have all the same you know viewport settings that you would in your normal viewport and if you want to go back to your normal viewport you just click on this uh, little cube button and it will minimize or maximize back to your original viewport 
So those are all our viewport controls. So by now, hopefully, you've learned how to select various objects, translate, rotate, and scale them, and move around the viewport. So now we're going to go over all of the other UI, all the other windows that you see here on the editor. So we're going to start over here at the very top. So at the very top here, we have obviously the Unreal Engine logo, but we have you know, various different menus. So first thing under the file, we have basic things like we can open a new level. So our current level that we have loaded is this template level. It's called our first person map. So we could create a new level if we wanted to open a new level or open an asset. Okay, we have our uh, basic save settings. So we could save all, save our current level. Usually I just use this save all button. Then we have import or export. And then we have project. If we want to create a brand new Unreal Engine project or open up a recent project. Then we have an exit. Of course, you can always hit the X button here at the top right to exit out of your project. Next, we have edit. So we have things like our history. We can undo or redo. So control Z or control Y to undo or redo. We have various things like cut, copy and paste, and then duplicate or delete. And so those are things that I will briefly mention right now. Basically, if you're working with any object in the viewport, uh, you have your basic, you know, control Z, control V, uh, copy controls. So if you do control Z, control V, it will go ahead and copy paste any sort of object. You can do delete to delete an object. Another neat hotkey for duplicating objects is if you hold down alt on your keyboard and you drag on one of the arrows, it will duplicate it. So all you have to do is hold down alt and select an arrow and that will go ahead and duplicate it. Okay. And we can go ahead and delete those. So those are all under our edit options as well. Another thing that we have here is our editor preferences. So if you open that up, this is things like you know, general appearance. And also it has some other settings, keyboard shortcuts, all that sort of stuff. Next up, we have project settings. So under your project settings, you can change various different settings that are related to your project. So things like, you know, your project thumbnail, uh, the actual icon, the default maps, settings regarding, you know, collision, input, all those sort of things are stored under your project settings. Okay, so these are specific to your project that you're working on. Next up, we have plugins. So plugins are sort of like extensions that add more functionality to the engine or to your project. And Unreal Engine comes with a bunch of built-in plugins. So if you go to the built-in here, you can scroll through all the different built-in plugins that already come with the engine. And a lot of them aren't enabled by default. Uh, that way it will save you know space on your project. When you have time, you can go ahead and look through all these and see if there's a plugin that you might be interested in using. But there's a lot of neat stuff in here. Now there's also paid plugins that you can buy online that you can add and install uh, through here. Next up, we have this window tab. Now, if for whatever reason you close any of the windows within your editor, say for example, I accidentally close my viewport, I click that X. If you go back to window here, you can open up you know, your viewport one by just going to window viewport or by going to any of the various windows and opening those up. Now you can also open up an additional viewport if you wanted to uh, by just clicking on that. And at here at the very bottom, if for whatever reason you mess something up, you exit out of a couple of windows and you don't know what you did, you can go to load layout and load the default editor layout. So that will just go back to the default layout that you see here. Okay, there's a couple of other options over here, you know, things like uh, different logs, 
and we'll probably cover this later on in the course specifically things like the message log and output log down here we have get content so this will open up the unreal engine marketplace and then this will open up quixo bridge uh, which is a free asset library that you can use it has you know thousands of free high quality assets and we will cover this later on in the course tools here under the programming you can add a new c++ class so this is if you have you know visual studio installed and you're working with c++ uh, that's where you'd add your classes under the tools here we have uh, various different tools or editor tools that you can use we're not going to really uh, cover any of this and yeah let's go on to the next tab we have build so build is where you need to build various things such as lighting textures grass maps i want to cover this later on in the course but all of your build options for all those various settings are in the build tab so this is a menu that i rarely use uh, but basically you can do things like select all unselect all invert selection of course you can just use things like control a to select everything and if you want to unselect everything you can just click off into the distance and we'll just deselect everything again there's a couple other options here and like i said i don't really use this menu under the actor uh, we have a couple of other options here as well again i don't really use this window um, but we will go over this specific window later on because it comes up when you uh, right click certain actors so we'll get into this later on next up we have help so this has things like quick links to the documentation uh, online learning forms all that sort of stuff so that's just the top menu right there down below it we have the first person map which is the current map we're working on and then down below it we have the save icon so if you want to save all your current changes now this is just a quick save so every time you know you have some changes you can click save that will save the current level but oftentimes what you want to do is do a file save all and that will just save all your files in your project not just the current level that you're working on next up here we have the different modes so these are the different modes that allow you to create various things so we have the first mode which is the select mode you know which allows us to select various objects second mode is the landscape mode which allows us to create you know, things like terrain mountains hills all that stuff and you're going to see that we have this new window the landscape window pop up so you're going to see whenever we change the mode our windows are going to change to open up those various different window modes so we have things like landscape foliage is what we use to paint things like grass, trees, rocks. Then we have mesh paint. So this is if you want to paint materials on certain objects in your level. Modeling, you can model 3D objects inside of Unreal Engine. It's still pretty basic and they're working on expanding this to add a lot more features in here. Next up, we have the fracturing mode. So this is what you'll use to create uh, destructible meshes uh, whether that be you know a destructible glass or a destructible building uh, you can create all those through the fracture mode we have next up brush editing uh, this is sort of used for creating or blocking out your level and last but not least we have animation so this is if you're using the control rig which is a built-in animation system inside of unreal engine that's actually a really neat tool that you can use to create your own animations inside of the engine rather than having to go to a third-party program so those are all the different modes next up we have the cube plus icon so this allows us to get various content so we can import content we can open up the quixel bridge uh, the Unreal Engine Marketplace. We're going to open up our content browser. And I will go over the content browser here in a second. But we can also place uh, various actors in our level. So if you hover over the basic, we have things like an actor, a character, a pawn, 
a light. And I will discuss, you know, all these different uh, types later on in this course. So you don't have to worry if you don't know what these words mean. But basically, you know, we have things like basic lights that we can place in our scene. So we can delete that. So all you have to do is hover over the light and select the point light and drag it into your scene. And that's how you can add a very basic actors or objects. So, you know, we have shapes like a cube. We can drag that in like so. We have, you know, a sphere, cylinder, all that sort of stuff. Cinematic, we have things like, you know, your camera, cinematic camera actor, and level sequence. And that's what you use to create either game cinematics or even if you want to create films inside of Unreal Engine. Visual effects, these are things like post-processing, uh, sky atmosphere, and even clouds. Uh, volumes, we have all sorts of different volumes. Under the all classes, basically this is all of these menus combined. And a neat thing is if you type inside of here, so if you type in cube, it, you, you will pull up the cube or really anything that you want to search. You can just type inside of there and it will pop up like that. So next up we have this little network node and basically this is for blueprint. This is to create a level blueprint or just a new blueprint class and I'll be discussing what blueprints are in our next lecture so you don't need to worry about those for now. The next up button right here is this little cinematic button. This will allow you to add things like level sequences and level sequences are again uh, more towards cinematics or you know, short films. But those allow you to uh, do things like that. Now to the right of that we have our basic play options. So we have this green play button that if we click play we can play this first person template. So if you haven't already um, it's a very simple template that you can play through and all it really is is you can pick up a weapon here and you can fire these little yellow balls at these cubes you can see the cubes have physics and you can jump around move around it's a very very simple template now you can exit out of this template or out of the play mode by clicking escape or shift escape and you can also click the stop button whenever you're playing now over here under the three dots we have a couple of different modes so if you wanted to play in the selected viewport, if you want to play in a new editor window, and if you wanted to play in standalone game and all that stuff, uh, we're going to cover this later on in a few lectures from now. Uh, but basically, you'll have things like the different net modes where you want to play as you know single player or multiplayer. And again, we'll cover that in another lecture. This last button that we have on the toolbar is a platforms button. So this will allow us to package or ship our game on various different platforms. So, you know, things like iOS, Android, Linux, or Windows. So if you're going to share your game with someone else or upload it to Steam or whatnot, you'd come down here to Windows and go ahead and package your project so that you can upload it to Steam, send it to your friends, or play it as a actual package game. So that's the top toolbar over here. On the very right, we have you know our minimize, maximize, exit. Then we also have our settings here. You know, game specific settings, like our project settings, plugins. We also have scalability settings. So under the engine scalability settings, this is like a built-in options menu where you can choose you know if you want low medium high or epic quality graphics so if you're getting you know not the greatest frame rate or if you don't have the best hardware you can set all the settings here to low and this will give you a boost in frame rate and it will allow you to maybe you know get through the entire course uh, if you don't have the best hardware and again that's in the settings engine scalability settings we can go ahead and set that back to epic and material quality level mess around with that rendering level uh, basically if you're going to be rendering 
this game on you know, Android or iOS, you can change the rendering mode there. That's the settings window. Underneath it, we have this world outliner window. So the world outliner is essentially just a list that you can scroll through that lists every single object, basically every single object that we have inside of our scene. So if we select anything inside of our level here, you're gonna see in the world outliner, it automatically selects and highlights what object we're selecting. So you can see I've selected cube number 10, cube number nine. I can select this little weapon, it says BP rifle. So the world outliner allows us to go in and select various objects. We can also do things like shift select if we want to select a group of certain objects. And you can also see that some of these objects are grouped into folders as well. So you can select objects and right click and add it to a folder or create a new folder to organize all the different assets that you have in your scene. You also have things like the visibility. So if you want to hide something, you can temporarily hide it by just clicking on the eyeball icon right next to the object. So that's our world outliner. Uh, also another thing, another hot key that is very useful is if you have either any object selected in your scene or in your world outliner and say we're super far across the map and you want to focus in on that object what you have to do is select it and click the F key on your keyboard and your camera will automatically focus in on that object so just a really neat hot key now down below here we have the details window so the details panel shows us various different details depending on whichever object that we have selected. So you can see when I select this cube, we can see the name of that object. We can see down here in the details under the transform, we can see the actual location of it, the rotation, and the scale. So when I move this cube around, you can see that the location changes according to where I move it around in the level. So those are all the different values that you can see inside of the details. You can also see things like uh, the mesh. So a static mesh is very simply just an object that doesn't move or doesn't necessarily do anything. Uh, technically this cube uh, has physics enabled. So you can see here under the physics, it's set to simulate physics. And that's what allows us to, uh, you know, shoot balls at these different cubes and, you know, they get flung around the level. It's because in the details panel, you have this setting, simulate physics, set to true. So in the details, you also have materials. You can change, you know, the color of the cube by changing the material. And you have a bunch of other settings like collision, lighting, and all that stuff. So again, if you select on any other object, you're going to see the different details according to that object. Now, last but not least, we have this content drawer. So if you click on the content drawer, it's going to expand this little window. And basically, this is the content drawer or content browser. And this is where you can download or import 3D models, assets, and you can create all of the different files that you need for your project. So you can open up this window by just clicking on the content drawer. And if you click in your viewport, that content drawer will automatically go away. Now there is a hotkey to open up the content drawer and that is control spacebar. So if you just press control and spacebar, it will either show or hide the content drawer. Now one thing that you can also do with the content drawer is you can click this dock in layout and so that will dock it permanently in your viewport here that way you don't have it automatically hide or show uh, whenever you click something in the viewport 
Now you can always go back by clicking that X button and if you just click on the content drawer you can see that we still have the content drawer or the content browser right here by just clicking on that button. Now I'm just going to dock this in layout for now so I can explain all of the uh, different buttons inside of our content drawer. Basically we have this green add button so we can add various different assets inside of our content browser. So we can add things like blueprints, levels, materials, and even more options down here, even more different file types. Okay, so we will discuss all these different file types throughout this entire course. Um, but you, as you can see, there's a lot of different uh, custom Unreal Engine 5 asset types, and you will get familiar with them throughout this course uh, because as you can see there's a lot of different asset types uh, you know things like materials media physics all that sort of stuff another thing we have here is we can create folders so in our content folder we can right click anywhere and create a new folder and just name this new folder like so also right click and delete the folder and you can also navigate through the different folders by double clicking to go and look through all the different contents of the folder and you can go back a level by clicking the back or forward arrows or you can click on the names up here or the of the folders to go back to where you were you can also navigate through the folders on the left right here and you could expand you know, some of these folders to see the different subfolders inside of them. Now as you look through all these folders you're going to see all of the different files that make up this template so you know things like the character mesh like the arms uh, various different materials you can see inside of the level level prototyping we have you know that simple cube that we saw in our level and to get any of these assets or 3d models into our scene from our content browser all you have to do is drag and drop it inside so it's super simple select the object you can drag and drop it into your scene you can also shift select multiple objects to drag all those into your scene at once now you can also filter your content browser by clicking this little filter so you can filter by you know, materials meshes all those different file Unreal Engine file types uh, that I will discuss later on okay and then of course you can search by just typing in cube or typing in really any file that you're searching for and you're gonna see it will pull up the associated files with the file names. Okay, so that's our content browser, content drawer. Uh, we also have, you know, here things like an output log. Uh, we're not gonna really cover over that right now, but basically those are all the different viewports, windows. It might be intimidating at first if it's, you know, your first time or if you're fairly new to the engine, but as you get used to all of the windows, you know just to the controls and as you get more familiar with it it will be a lot easier for you to navigate around and to find you know, what setting or what option you're looking for so that is it for this lecture in our next lecture we will discuss blueprint you know, what are blueprints a basic blueprint crash course and yeah that's pretty much it i'll see you in the next lecture